I'll wait till it's law. It's till it's. Are we on yet? It just started. It started. Oh, here's the Facebook. Now you can close that. Yeah. Are we on? Yeah. We're still waiting on the lag. That's there's there's a lag on the Facebook feed. So give us give us a moment. All right, here we go. Just filling some air time. Everybody have a good morning. Good. Sorry about the uh, special gifts that the geese left. We tried to do our best with those. Are we up yet? Still coming on? Oh, OK. All right, well, you know what? Give us a ring. Please rise. That wasn't very assertive. He'll do better next time. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. My brothers and sisters in Christ, together, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto humankind, in Christ Jesus, our Lord, and grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. Our King and Savior draweth nigh. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. Oh come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Our King and Savior draweth nigh. O come, let us adore him. 
I failed to welcome you all today as uh, our reader makes his way to the podium. Uh, it is Gaudete Sunday, Rejoicing Sunday. We wear rose vestments. And today we welcome to the pulpit Laura Bonamici, aspirant to holy orders here in our parish and God willing in the Diocese of New Jersey once that process resumes. The psalm for today is Psalm 126. We will read responsibly by half verse. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then, were we like those who dream. then was our mouth filled with laughter. And our tongue then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad to you. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Like the water courses of the negative. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their seed. Glory to the, to the Father, Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. The first canticle is canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah. We'll read responsibly by half verse. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land. Deep gloom and shrouds the people. But over you the Lord will rise. Nations will stream to your light. And came to the brightness of your dawn. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord. The Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land. Ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation. And all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. The Lord will be your everlasting light. And your God will be your glory. Glory, glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, 
for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Our second canticle is canticle four, the song of Zechariah. Again, we will read responsibly by half verse. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. And hath raised up a mighty salvation for us. In the mouth of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies. From the hand of all the natives. To perform the mercy promised to our forefathers. And to remember his holy covenant. To perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham. That, he would give us. that we being delivered out of the land, uh, out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the days to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. And to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory, Glory to, the to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now then, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you, Father Marshall, for inviting me to speak this morning to, to give a sermon on one of your favorite Sundays. It's Gaudete Sunday and rejoice. So we just heard the story of the prophet Isaiah sharing the good news with the people of, of the Israelites that their exile is almost over. He tells about the celebration that will come and describes it like a wedding banquet. And I could picture the, the joy and the celebration, the, the relief that they felt that the day got lighter because the end was in sight. So as I'm 
and it, this this is a familiar story. We hear this, you know, frequently during Advent. It's it's a comforting story. So I'm reading again to prepare for this sermon, and I saw I saw it in a new way this year that exile, of course, is forced separation from your homeland. Separate exile is also being separated from those whom you love, the things that you love, the things that are familiar. And I realized that this year we are in exile. Everything is different. And all of us are affected by it. Some of us are just merely rattled. Some of us are shaken to our core. Some of us, it depends on the day or the hour. Many of us have suffered terrible loss or terrible hardship. We, we are all working through it to the best that we can. And, and I go back to the picture of Isaiah and the Israelites, and I, I say, how can we rejoice now when it hurts now? How do we celebrate future joy because it hurts now? Back when I was in college, I took a philosophy class. And one of the days we were talking about pain. And when you focus on pain, you feel more pain. When you focus away from pain, the pain subsides. It doesn't go away, but it subsides. So let's focus away from pain. Let's focus on God. God loves us. God loves all of us. God loves each of us. God loves us so much, he sent Jesus to be with us. And Jesus was quite clear. We have two commandments. Love God with our whole heart and mind and soul. I don't think I quoted that right. I'm sorry, Father. <laughs> and love our neighbor as ourselves. So reach out to God, pray, follow the daily office, join morning prayer, join evening prayer. We're on, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. Spend time in a daily devotional like Forward Day by Day or D365. And then reach out to someone else. Check in with a friend, a neighbor, a family member. See how they're doing, catch up. Just be together in, in voice, in FaceTime, Zoom, what, whatever it is, be with your neighbor. You'll both feel better. Now when this, you know, so, several months ago, we started talking about the new now or the, and there's no going back. The world has changed where it's and, and like it or not, we have changed with it. And when the world resumes to what it once was, it's not what it was. It's it's not like coming back from a trip where we can do our laundry, read our email and pick up where we left off. It's different. We have an opportunity to choose how we are going to reset our lives. And with, uh, I, I will add a corollary, corollary to my philosophy professor. When you focus on love, you feel more love. So choose love, choose God. So yes, we are in exile and exile will end. God is with us. God loves us. So let's rejoice. Amen. 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 Well done. Please rise as we rise together and affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. He believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I'm sorry. John was right. I jumped ahead. Rejoice. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. And it's one of my favorite colics. Stir up thy power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let thy bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, the honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Now the prayers of the people. As witnesses to your light and truth, we come to you in prayer, O Lord. Infuse the heart of your church with your spirit and focus it on your mission. Renew your people and their leaders as they serve your purpose. Remind us continually whose we are. Turn the hearts and actions of all the world's leaders to justice and peace. We pray for Donald, our president, Joseph, our president-elect, Philip, our governor, the Congress and courts of this land. Open our eyes to what is going on around us. Open our hearts to our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Move us to open our hands in love when they are in need and to stand up for them when they are oppressed. We pray for those suffering from natural disasters, from unjust economies, from hunger and want. We know people around us who are suffering from anxiety, scarcity, illness, and loneliness. Some of them we know, and most are unknown to us. We ask that you assure them of your presence and sustain them with your grace. We pray for those we know by name, Elizabeth, Don, Dylan, Kay and Michael, Nate, Rick, Christopher, Rita, Eddie, Jeff and family, Felicia, Albert, Stephen, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Jay, Ray, Eugene, Edmundo, Kathy, Leah, Susie, Kim, Shelley, Scott, Amy, Anne Marie, Sarah, Renee, Peter, Margaret, Michael, Brian, Jeanette, Art, Mark, Robert, Misty, Brian, Cheryl, Stacy, Moira, Phil, Christina, and Alex. Our hearts break when someone we love dies. Today we mourn for the recently departed. May we be a comfort as we walk with their grieving loved ones. 
in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Falkland Islands, extra provisional to Canterbury, the Right Reverend Timothy Thornton, Bishop to the Forces and Bishop to the Falkland Islands. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reverends J. Connor Haynes, Martha M. McKee, Dr. John P. Mitchell. For those ser serving in the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Connor, Jared, Matthew, and Austin. For those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Elizabeth and Larry, and for all those celebrating anniversaries this week. Gracious God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, what we have asked for faithfully, may you grant effectually to the glory and wonder of the mystery of your presence in our lives. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everyone. Please be seated. So announcements, we had another amazing day at the thrift shop yesterday. I told you last week that they, uh, they hit my SAT score um, at 1060. So this year, uh, this week they hit 1050. Um, but that's impressive nonetheless. And as well, we continue to be productive in our, uh, in our uh, community supper. Jeannie, what was the count? 129, 129 suppers. Um, I was at the, uh, the Episcopal Community Services Summit. We are starting a diocesan wide outreach effort with, an, with the uh, Episcopal Community Services. It's a nonprofit foundation focused specifically on supporting outreach efforts in our communities. This will augment and expand upon the work of the Jubilee Centers of the Diocese. There are 34 Jubilee Centers in this diocese of which St. Peter's is one that are specifically chartered by the diocese in outreach and in service to others. So from those flagships will we'll literally flow forth a new tide of service in our diocese that we mobilize ourselves. You'll be hearing more about that in the weeks and months to come. I just wanted to celebrate what all we are already doing in terms of outreach to those in need so that we can join and support and lead those in our diocese who are seeking to expand their commitment as well to social, economic, and personal justice for people who are in need. So we're very glad to offer that up. Tonight, or tomorrow night, we have our vestry meeting. Uh, I want to thank everyone who is considering and discerning a call to vestry who will be joining us as observers at that meeting. Um, we look forward to that engagement with you as well as deepening our conversations. We are going to be discerning and looking at our mission and ministry budget for 2021. This is the December meeting's primary focus, but we're also going to be focused on some significant infrastructure efforts we're going to be offering in the new year. You'll be hearing more about that in next week's e-news. I also want to thank everyone for being here today. Can we give a loud shout out to our creator and redeemer who offered us a day like this after last week? It's a respite. We'll take it. We know that there is a concomitant cost with the nor'easter that's blowing in from the Midwest, but we'll take it. We'll take today. This is the first time I've done a service outside in December where I thought, you know, I really should have put on sunscreen before we started. As well, I want to thank our financial secretary and treasurer, Kirk. He's coordinating the distribution of envelopes for those who desire them. We have them set up and we'll be offering them progressively through the coming weeks. As you come to worship, you can pick those up at the sign-in point at the usher's table. So thank you for that. Anything else I'm missing? Chris, how are we doing? We're good, Laura? Anybody? Great. Wonderful and good. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Amen. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet 
right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, because thou didst send thy beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord, our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image. And of thy tender mercy didst give thine only son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. We didn't plan that. Please join me in the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Oh. 
body of Christ is called a temple. The 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 body of Christ is called a temple. Body of Christ is the Lord of Heaven. 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 And the body of Christ is the Lord of Heaven. It's the body of Christ. Body of Christ is the Lord of Heaven. Body of Christ is the Lord of Heaven. Body of Christ is the Lord of Heaven. And the body of Christ is the Lord of Heaven. Body of Christ is the Lord of Heaven. And the body of Christ is the Lord of Heaven. Body of Christ is the Lord of Heaven. Let's take that on the next one. body of Christ, the bread of heaven, blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Please rise. And together, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of the everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works that thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thank you all, everyone. Give our preacher a hand again.